and here we are a sunday morning really 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 happy that everybody is joining thank you so much for joining this um this live stream i love doing live streams because it just um you know i just connect with people who i've never seen before and it's very fun uh to meet new people and uh you know, thank you all for being here. I know you could be doing something else today, but you decided to show up and to, you know, do it, right? So great. All right. So let me see. I'm going to go over here and we're going to start uh, this awesome webinar. Woohoo! All right. Thank you again for being here. Um, again, for making the time, the space, for being curious, you know, uh, for being ready to learn uh, some new information that maybe will help your musical career at some point. I hope that, you know, all the videos that I've been doing on YouTube have been helping you in some way or another uh, to, you know, take that step forward in your musical career, uh, whether it's just, you know, singing for your family, whether it's just uh, something more like... Um, you know, like mental health, whether it's uh, singing for God or whatever you believe in, uh, whether it's um, being a rock star and being famous, you just never know. Uh, train so many kids and, and adults that I've seen it all. <laughs> and it's very fun. It's very fun. And I'm going to share so many stories with you so you can feel motivated, so you can feel ready um to thrive which is what we're gonna do today very very excited um and well i'm also i have my team here um i know that juliana is gonna pop up in you know in at some point or another but i wanted to um i wanted to you know tell kristen to see if um if you wanted to uh to pop in and say hi. Are you there? Let's I'm here. See. Awesome. Great. Let me see if we can see you. Let me see. Um, okay, let's see. All right. There you go. Awesome. Can everybody see her? Yeah. Awesome. All right. So Kristen, introduce yourself. Um, uh, tell us, you know, where you're from and how long have you been, you know, with us at Melly Music Lessons, just so people have an idea and are here and know your face and are excited to, at some point, maybe work with you, uh, you know, let us know all that great info. Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Kristen. I have been with Melly Music Lessons um, almost five months, and I am originally from north of Boston, Massachusetts. However, I have been in New York City almost 20 years as of next August, um, which is kind of exciting. And I have been playing piano since I was five played flute, um, have been singing since I could talk. Um, my poor parents were like, let's get her voice lessons because she just keeps singing. So I have a lot of different things that I like to focus on for my own personal experience. I'm a huge fan of vocal longevity and singing and working on, you know, getting your voice to the best level it can be and the most comfortable it can be. So I focus a lot on that. And of course, because I want to make it fun, I focus on songs, things that you love to sing and that you want to sing better and exercises that are going to help you be the best singer that you can be. So it's something that I love and I'm passionate about. So I'm so, so excited to uh, get the chance to speak to you guys today and hopefully see you in a lesson in the future. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, we really appreciate it. And, um, you know, she's there to help you guys. So whatever you need, uh, she will help you. Okay, so let's begin this awesome uh, webinar. I just wanted to, you know, I see new faces as well. Um, Esha, uh, Israel, 
uh, I've seen people in, you know, like downloading um, free warm up exercises and things like that. But, you know, I, I it's always nice to see new people uh, and returning people. Michelle, so great to see you. Slim, Steve, Sueda, Sueda, yay. Um, William, I hope I said it right. Um, awesome. Yes, and let me actually press record. There we go. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, um, perfect. Um, all right, so let's get started. We're going to cover in today's webinar, you know, lots of stuff that goes through a singer's head when she's singing, when he's singing, when everybody's singing. Um, some of them are like anxiety, fear of criticism, um, how to thrive at singing. I'm going to tell you a few stories. How to overcome stage fright, uh, how to um, overcome self-doubt, you know, um, procrastination like why do we not do it today why do we wait until tomorrow <laughs> um you know all this great stuff is h a stopping factor um all the vocal techniques that you need to succeed and i will you know urge you guys to stay until the end uh guys and girls to stay until the end for a free gift that i'm gonna give away uh which are my top uh, five routines I do before going on stage. I feel this could be valuable information because um, even if you not necessarily have like, you know, like a big stage, your stage could still be, you know, your room when you're going live, maybe on YouTube, your room or like, you know, in front of your family or it could be your karaoke or, you know, what, whatever you, you want, you know. Um, okay, great. So not so long ago, um, I didn't know how to fully control my voice. I, I know it sounds like, are you, you know, how long ago was that? <laughs> How long ago? You know, uh, it was probably, probably like 20 years ago. I didn't know how to fully control my voice. I suffered a lot from like pitch problems. I didn't know how to uh, be in tune for a long period of time. I feel like every time that I had a gig or a concert or, you know, I was always struggling with that. And I feel that um, I started, after that, I started taking lessons from different teachers so I could find different answers. And you know how that goes, right? You, you all have taken lessons at some point or another, or if you haven't, um, you're always on the search for that person that can explain you things really well, right? That can explain, that can resonate with you, that can, um, that can be in your same level, you know? Sometimes um, you find a great teacher, but maybe it's not like the greatest fit, and that's okay, you know? Uh, so I start, you know, finding ways to sing him better, uh, and I actually, you know, to actually love my voice, because I remember hearing myself and thinking, oh gosh you know <laughs> it sounds bad it doesn't sound like what i want to sound like <laughs> it sounds like um something that uh, i need to get better at so uh I, and also I, I was trying to not sound like everybody else because that's another thing that we struggle i think as singers we we always want to, you know, Adele has such an amazing voice, but do we really want to like copy exactly how Adele sings? I don't know about that, right? She has a, a unique thing. So little by little, I was able to start singing better. At that point, it was just like a hobby for me. I just wanted to like sound better, right? A year later, I was able to perform on my first open mic. I was really nervous, I remember, um, but I was very excited at the same time. And I just wanted to... Um, I had kind of like mixed feelings, you know, because when you're performing in front of people, you never want to let down your teacher, you never want to let down your family, you never want to let down anybody in the audience, you, you feel like I hope I don't mess up this particular note, because then it's going to be just a disaster. <laughs> I, I know, like, have you guys been there? Can you share in the chat? Like, I've been there, you know, or can you can you tell me like, has that happened to you at some point? um let me know in the chat i would love to right yes maritza yeah i know right yes yes exactly so basically um i remember not being the best performance by the way um but 
I was feeling very happy to receive that support from my peers, you know, and um, and I knew that that was only the beginning for my musical journey, you know. Um, after that, I started getting contacted from different people who have heard, of, you know, of me, and I'm like, wanted to start a band with me, and I'm like, with me? <laughs> what? Um, so I must have been doing something right, I guess. Um, fast forward, and after like many rehearsals, after going through many teachers, through many things, um, those rehearsals were some great. Some of them I actually lost my voice because I didn't, at that point, I still didn't know how to control my voice. I wasn't properly trained. Um, so we started getting, at that point, I, I started getting some, some, you know, some sponsorships. Uh, we we appeared in a magazine. Um, I'm sure you guys are gonna enjoy seeing what I'm gonna about to share. We opened for this uh, this band. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but it's called um, the Misfits, and um, it, it was very very fun. So here is me with opening for the Misfits. Um, it was like it was a total amazing day it was chaos um i had a punk rock band and uh here's me getting some sponsorship from converse i i'm sure you guys remember these types of images at some point they were very popular um it was it was fun you know it was definitely fun and yes that's a mohawk uh i was rocking that mohawk like no other <laughs> and i remember the day before the photo shoot sleeping with that it was something challenging that's all i have to say um but anyways back to me uh, basically um after many rehearsals um i had a blast opening for the misfits and we were really busy and i was losing my voice constantly like constantly so if i only had like a quick way of of learning vocal techniques on the go that would have like really helped me a lot and, you know, after many failed attempts, I decided to get more into like formal music training and made the decision to enroll in a music school called Los Angeles College of Music. Up to this point, I'm still in Los Angeles, California, and I learned a lot. Um, then I started teaching and learning so much. You know, I feel like it's good to go to music school, but nothing teaches you more than just repeating it and uh, be in present with other people. And so that's what I started doing. Uh, I learned that each voice is unique. Uh, and I learned that, you know, all the things that, you know, I thought, oh, this is the way it's done because this is the way music school teaches me. Not necessarily, you know, I feel like um, I learned a lot on the way. And, uh, you know, I started to work on my voice. I get, a, uh, I start to get stronger, more flexible, more flexible before I couldn't even, by the way, do, um, the vibrato da vibrato. I call it vibrato because it's kind of like an Italian and I have Italian family. So, um, it's, you know, I couldn't even do that. And it was, you know, it was very challenging for me because I feel, I felt like I was left behind at some point. So, Anyways, um, it's easier said than done, right? I, I'm sure that everybody has been there and um, I'm sure that, you know, it requires a lot of, of confidence. The way to build confidence is repetition. Repetition is the most important thing um, to build that. But hey, we've all been there, you know, the, the palms sweating, the heart was racing, we're forgetting lyrics, right? Uh, you're being afraid of that high note, uh, not show ups for your live gig, uh, your mouth is completely dry and you're like, um, you know, right? Yeah, Kristen says repetition is key, I agree. Um, no show ups to your live gig, right? <laughs> you're like, uh, just uh, building habits, exactly, Kristen, right on, you're right. Um, you know, uh, I feel like, uh, the voice cracks. Hey, how many times has that happened to you guys? Many times for me, you know, many times, <laughs> um, self-doubt. And so one word, you know, 
that creates performance anxiety, right? So what does performance anxiety mean? Um, basically is when, when you experience some kind of like an anxious resistance in your performance. So it has the, it has the power to like take all of your nerves and almost at times like paralyzing you. And sometimes you can even begin to feel like sick, but the cool thing is that it's a condition. So it's a temporary feeling and that you can overcome with a positive repetition of a new habit. So maybe, uh, you know, maybe this, this fear was also created from past experiences. Um, for example, I had a teacher who, he was amazing, but he, he taught me that he was classically trained and, uh, and he taught me to really stiffen my diaphragm a lot to get a very good note. Um, and that wasn't always the case for all the songs, you know? I feel like sometimes um, you have to play with your diaphragm and sometimes you want to sing like softly and sometimes you want to you wanna sing strongly. And, um, and it's different how you manage that. So at the end, I end up, I ended up having that fear that if I didn't stiff my diaphragm, I wasn't able to, um, you know, to sing correctly. And that was completely wrong. So all of these things to tell you that uh, these are kind of like things that you can create in your mind that at the end can be, can be, you know, unbroken. So, um, sorry, uh, broken, that's what I mean. At the end can be broken. So uh, it's not easy. Sometimes you have to dig very deep to understand what's happening in your subconscious level, but it can be done, you know. Um, so what is performance anxiety for me? It's all in my mind. Um, it's kind of like this physical condition. Um, it could be based on a thought or, or a memory that triggers that thought, you know, that we're going to have a bad experience. So, for example, if I miss a note, then I think, oh, my whole gig is ruined, you know, or um, even though... I sang it perfectly. I thought like, oh, if I miss one note, it's going to be a bad gig, you know? And so um, your mind starts questioning, oh my God, am I going to do this again? You know, like, can I do this again? Can I really be a singer? Um, so we learn to be perfect through our teachers, our parents, our friends, setting the bar so high that anything below that is sometimes considered like a disappointment. So, you know, it's... Um, it's very real. I'm sure that if you've lived that, put on the chat, yes, please. I know that um, some of you have lived that. Have you lived that? Yes. Khadija. Did I say that right? Khadija. I like your name. That's cool. The anxiety feels like it's squeezing the throat and chest, makes it impossible to even uh, drown in a breath and project the breathing into the voice. Correct. Yes, exactly. Slim. Yes. Yasmin says yes. Um, good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. Uh, Charles says yes. Israel says yes. I'm always nervous to sing when I'm around my family. Yes, exactly. I mean, they're, they are our closest, you know, people. So of course we're very nervous to sing around family and around friends because we don't want to disappoint them. And I understand what that causes. That causes something that is called adrenaline. So basically, it's especially in shy people. I used to be really, really shy. And I put a lot of pressure on me when I was about to perform. And, you know, and so my, my body says, hey, you're in danger. And I start pumping that adrenaline, you know, and it, it starts feeling like I'm shaking, like, like you know, I mean, the adrenaline is doing what it's supposed to do in your body, right? Um, so how do we fight that adrenaline from kicking in and change it for excitement instead? Um, basically, we're going to have to prepare. Preparation. Preparation meets opportunity, right? We've all heard that. So um, we have to first identify the fear root so what's going on in your mind um i had a, a student who had recently vocal surgery and she was afraid to to sing again because she was afraid to hurt herself and 
she just had to retrain herself and so that was one of the fears you know afraid of another injury so um the second thing is support you have to have like good warm-ups you have to have good stage prep um practice in front of empty chairs like if you're gonna go to agt america's got talent um you have like you know at some point um i would even tell you to practice with like a simon cowell's picture in front of you or something you know um one of the judges is called simon cowell and and i feel like that way you're able to <laughs> right no it's true uh because i feel that way you're able to picture him in front of you and then you won't be as nervous when you see him in real person right you also have to do like a dress rehearsal so like instead of just going to the stage and performing um you know you can you can actually dress like you're going to perform and and do it like that you know i remember when i used to have a lot of concerts uh sometimes three hour concerts in restaurants and in bars and things like that at casinos as well i used to practice standing up with my piano exactly how we're gonna how i was gonna perform and just picturing there was a lot of people in front of me you know and so that made the anxiety definitely go away or you know it's still a little bit there but at least you're able to tame it to you know lower it a little bit so other ways to get over stage fright is you know birthday parties sing a song or two to you know desensitize from from that you know um another way is focus on your lyrics and message what does the uh, what's the song mean to you um another thing is meditate you know if you're into that breathing eliminates co2 in the brain co2 causes more stress in the brain so it it helps i definitely took a a few breaths before coming into this you know call <laughs> uh believe it or not it's it's i'm excited though i'm excited i remember the first time i did a webinar i was freaking out but now i'm excited so uh visualize so if you have like let's say you have like a crown or you have like a uh, like a picture of a butterfly or whatever you like picture that or have it have it somewhere have it in your phone have it somewhere to where you can look at it and and just focus you know it blocks everything else away and you're just focusing on that feeling um thank you so much thank you Khadija um and you know visualize um uh, rehearse looking at a focal point I always tell my students if you're going to sing in front of people try to visualize like a target on top of the people. Don't look at people's eyes, look on top of people's heads and they are actually not gonna even know they're not looking at you, you know, you're not looking at them. And that way you're not like freaking out and you're able to focus on your lyrics and on your message. And it's just a, a quick tip that I always do. Um, you know, if you're a musician, you have to over-prepare. Don't be late for the gig, please. You don't need more stress. Um, I am Costa Rican originally, and we are always late for everything, everything. So like I had to retrain that part of me. I had to, um, you know, make sure that I didn't uh, arrive late because I realized that cost me a lot of stress. Um, you know, you have to stop the self-destructive words. Whenever you're practicing a song, you're always like, oh, man, I failed this part again. I don't I don't I don't think I can do this. Bye. And then you get all, you know down on yourself and you say like that was horrible like try not to try not to speak like that to yourself at that point because you're only learning the song or you're only practicing the song um even when you're performing the song i feel like try to take it lightly because it, it's you that you're talking to you know you wouldn't talk to yourself like that if you were like a little baby right you wouldn't talk to if you're a mom you wouldn't talk to your baby like that right so um or even like the the child version of yourself um yes uh, michelle is asking if i will bring the open mics back yes i'm gonna bring the open mics back <laughs> you are running ahead of me girl uh, so i will get there um and uh, always be kind to yourself kristen says exactly yes um you know another thing that i do is i practice under pressure i record myself um i know it's kind of awkward but like 
you know, I always put my camera, my phone in this, in this day and time, you put your phone in front of you and you just record yourself to see how you sound, because maybe you sound a little bit different than what you're envisioning in your head. And if you think, you know, oh man, I need to practice this specific part that the high note is here and I'm kind of like, mm, <laughs> I'm not doing it right. Uh, so basically I would say, you know, um, make sure that, that you do that. You practice um, and do that. Okay, smile. Changes the chemistry in the body. So smile a lot. Smile, smile, smile. Um, and then, you know, feeling the mouth that is not dry, that changes, that the sensation changes, you know, that everything is okay. Um, Yasmin says, yes, spot on, on. That's how I exactly feel. Um, that what stops me from hitting the notes. Yes, exa exactly, Yasmin. So in your case, I would just record yourself and just, um, you know, whenever you're ready to record yourself, just so you can practice and, you know, go back and forth and see, oh man, I, okay, maybe I need to work on this part. So if you need to work on one part, don't work on the whole song, just work on that little part, you know, practice it over and over again. That's how I was taught in music school, practice over and over again, just that little part. Because sometimes you have to learn like 500 songs next week and you cannot just stay on that little part you know, or, you know, you cannot just do the whole thing. Um, so stay on that part, repeat it many times until you get it. Um, you are in control of the situation, by the way. So here's an other tips to avoid anxiety that I, I found helpful that have worked for me. Um, I normally try to avoid sugar whenever I'm about to go on stage because sugar peaks your state of mind. And, you know, I know coffee does that too. For some of us, it's very hard to leave that. I don't drink coffee, but I do drink green tea. Um, and that helps. Uh, try not to uh, have these before auditions or shows, you know, as we don't want any more sugar pumping into our system. Um, nicotine also alters the body. Um, I know it's easier said than done guys. This is just something that works for me. Um, anchoring, you know, if you press your finger and your thumb together, some, sometimes you can anchor your, your vision or something like in yoga in this case. Um, sometimes that helps some people, um, make sure you drink plenty of water. You have water on stage. Very important because you're about, you know, you're in maybe the three or <laughs> Kristen is saying, yes, she's uh, she's been on tour uh, this this summer and she's like, yeah, I understand, girl. What do you mean? Have water on stage because that mouth gets dry um, and make sure that you're breathing. Um, like, have you ever felt anxious sweating before a presentation? If you have felt anxious, please type yes on the on the chat. I want to know who has done that and like, how how do you get over that? You know, I would love to to know that in the chat. Yes, Wim, Wim, I hope that's said it right. Of course, um, good. Uh, how much breath do you need? Um, it all depends, you know, it all depends on the song. I feel like um, if we're gonna go for very high notes, you don't need that much breath. If we're gonna go for longer notes, you might need a little more breath. Uh, it all depends. So it, it depends on the song too. Uh, yes, yes, I, I see a lot of yeses, so yes, great. Okay, so let's talk about, um, do you guys have any questions, by the way? I feel like I'm going like super fast, but I'm just excited. Um, if, you're, uh, if you're getting ready for a big stage performance and you don't have enough time to warm up, how do you deal with it? Like anxiety and nervousness and boosting your confidence? That's a great question. How do I say your name? Peach. Peach? Like the fruit, yeah. Okay, peach, perfect. Um, thank you so much for that. Uh, well, if you are getting ready and you don't have enough time to warm up, what I would say is, um, again, I feel like you have to kind of like understand that before the presentation, you have to have you know, your homework done, basically. You had to um, to rehearse the song a couple of times, to know the lyrics well, all this stuff. And I am actually here 
to communicate this amazing song with these people. These people might need to hear the song today in the audience, you know, you just never know. So think more about it as if you're serving somebody else as, and not so much as I'm gonna fail because I don't know how to hit the high note, you know? Um, I feel like if you are about to go on stage and you don't have that much time to warm up, even if you, if you warm up for two minutes, that's better than zero, right? And if not, What has happened before in the past is that um, I've warmed up with the first few songs of, of the concert and then, you know, and then by the third song, you're, you're good to go, I think, you know, for the most part. Um, and then my second question to add to that was like auditioning with um, or like the wedding with another person, for example, like Beauty and the Beast or A Whole New World, like. Going into the first question is how do you handle audition songs? If you know you have an audition the next day, at mm -hmm. the like Tuesday, I have one, for example. And then oh, that's um, great. the next question is if you your duet partner and you are rehearsing for an audition that's on Tuesday and you had zero time to practice because the other person wasn't free, what do you do about it? Like, in terms of, like, warming up or in terms of keeping your voice healthy or you have zero time to perform because you're cramming in 15 minutes because you have to perform right at this minute. Okay, great. So what I would say, thank you for your questions. Um, I think what I would say is, again, If you're gonna have a great audition, you have to prepare ahead of time. So if that means your audition is on Tuesday, um, ideally what I would say is you should have started practicing probably two months ago. I know sometimes, you know, it's not the best, you know, sometimes we don't have that time, <laughs> you know? Sometimes we're very busy with life, with school, with anything, name it, right? Um, and so what I would say about that is try as much as possible to learn the lyrics of the song. Um, try to sing the song many times before the audition. The day of the audition, um, if you cannot warm up or if you don't know how to warm up, just sing the same song um, that same day so you, know, you can warm up that way. But I would definitely recommend, I have tons of free you know, stuff on YouTube that you can just grab and there's like free warm ups everywhere. So I would say, you know, just, just build something that you can warm up with at least like 15 minutes or something like that before uh, the audition. Uh, if your audition is at 10 a.m. and you're warming up at 8 a.m., chances are like you're not going to be able to kind of like, you know, warm up. I mean, your warm up is not going to last that long. So I would just say try to warm up at least ideally 30 minutes before the audition or so. Um, and so that would that would really help. Um, Ours is at three Eastern. I'm uh three Eastern, so it's like before our interview at two thirty. So, ours is okay. like three. Okay. Uh, yes, exactly. And good luck with that audition on Tuesday. I know you're gonna kill it, and it's gonna be great. And you know what? Um, I've done many auditions, and what I would say to you is try to just focus on the experience. Try to focus on the positive because there's gonna be many other auditions. If you really wanna you know, chase that audition world. And if you really want to get into, you know, theater, musical theater and all this greatness, I feel like uh, you have to audition many times before you actually get accepted. Sometimes you might audition once and then yeah. they, they accept you, right? But most of the time you have to like do it many, many times and I, that's okay, right? I three times and they were like the second time, you need to come back in. So There you go. So, nice work uh, great also, that sounds great i have a student that is not hitting the high note like we're doing i think it's whitney houston or kelly clarkson i don't even remember but mm -hmm. she hitting the notes as in like don't make me close one more door i don't want to uh -huh. hurt anymore how do you first off breath support How do you know that a high note is coming in a song like a Whitney Houston song or like a Beauty and the Beast song? Like, yeah, how do yeah. you know how to like convince yourself or the student to hit that high note? Because I have trouble with that as well. And then <laughs> another yeah. thing is another thing is a uh, vocal harmony. I'm asking on behalf of a friend because 
Yes. Um, no problem. Um, so, yeah. And we're gonna, we're gonna probably wrap it up there. So other people can also have the opportunity to ask things, but, um, definitely if it's more, uh, technique wise, I would say, um, I have a team of like world, world class teachers that work with me. Kristen is one of them. She's in this call. And, you know, if you need to schedule like a free trial lesson, um, we're here to help you, you know, um, I would say, you know, just from experience about high notes, you just have to repeat the song many times until, you know, Hey, here comes the high note and, uh, and prepare for that and have the proper vocal technique to get there. You know, uh, one of my favorite things is just to open your mouth so you can create space in, in your, in your vocals, um, and your vocal throat, there's more space. And so it's more space to hit the high note. Um, but you know, anything that is like that, I would definitely say, um, you can work with, with a coach and she's going to help you. And Kristen is great. And I know Juliana, oh, Juliana is here. Um, hi, Juliana. How is it going? Hi. Hi everyone. Didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> let me, let me pin you. Um, there you go. Hey, this is Juliana. She's my other world-class teacher. Um, and we're here to help you. Um, maybe you can tell us quickly a little bit about yourself um, and about, you know, uh, how long have you been with Millie Music Lessons and, um, you know, what do you love working on with, with students? Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, so my name is Juliana Rodriguez. I'm from Colombia, but I live here in the United States. Um, I've been a vocal coach for over... 11 years I think now um, so uh, basically I started with uh, Melly Music uh, it's I, I kind of like this story because I uh, met Melly because I wanted to get some lessons with her I, I so I took some some lessons with Melly and we got along very well and she helped me a lot with um, uh, a kind of an audition that I had to do um, and you know I told her about my story about me being a vocal teacher and just also you know sometimes um, even as long as we've been doing it we we still need help and you know we still need to brush in our technique and then uh, and and learn new things so so that's what I wanted to do and I learned so much from Melly but I, then she reached back to me asking if I wanted to teach with her which it was like such an amazing honor. So um, I think I started like February, is, am I right, of this year? Uh, yeah. All right. So um, yeah, basically what, well, one of the, the things that I love about uh, teaching vocals or just helping people be comfortable and confident with their voices is that it's such a uh, personal, internal process. And like I always said that it's like we're our unique instruments, each person. So I love the exploration and just uh, helping people to discover that in themselves and discover what are their skills and uh, discover what what it's that they make them so unique to make them better and just uh, you know like get that uh, personalized technique or method. So because I, I feel like everyone has that talent and we all have a voice. So um, so that's my favorite part of of teaching vocals uh it's it's a beautiful way to learn to love yourself and gain confidence and and just um uh i don't know you know like make a difference in the world so that it's how i feel about <laughs> and why i'm so passionate about teaching vocals and singing thank, of course. thank you so much i feel like um I love your story because when I met Juliana, he, she was so amazing at explaining things simple, which is something that I love to do in my lessons and in my YouTube videos. Um, simple things, step-by-step -step things. Kristen does that too. And it's just so refreshing to find people that have your same vision and that want to help you so much. Um, so, you know, it's, it's really, really nice. I have other questions over here. Thank you, Juliana. Um, I have other question says, Yasmin says, why does high notes tend to go breathy? That's because you think you need a lot of breath to go into the high notes, right? And so you tend to like, 
ah, you know, like do that. <laughs> and, um, and sometimes that's not the case. Um, you just have to learn how to control the breathing. You know, you have to learn how much breathing you need to let out in that specific high note. So it sounds good. And you also have to learn how to use your forward placement, all of that, all those things, you know, can be worked with, with our coaches, vocal coaches. Um, Another question I have here is Slim says, how do you safely work on expanding your range to higher notes without damaging your voice? And what are some signs to look out uh, for that? You could be doing something damaging versus doing something that is making your voice tired, but still safe. I've been there so many times, so I understand what you're saying. Um, I would say uh, breath support would be one of them. Plus like, knowing um can you can you let me answer the question please thank you um thank you so much though i know you know it <laughs> um okay so basically um uh, i would say definitely first of all you want to work on the different ranges um your chest voice your mixed voice and your head voice right you want to work on those ranges a lot uh, so that way um you are aware of how to place your sound in different parts of your face or of your body to create those high and low notes. Um, sometimes you damage your voice because you think like, oh, I need to get to the high note. I need to shout more. And no, that's not really the case. You know, if you know how to place your sound better, then um, I would definitely, you know, urge you to to get into like that forward placement. That would be great. Um, if your voice is tired, it's just because you're using your throat a little bit more than you should. Uh, you should be using your forward placement. Um, I was working actually on something like that with with a student of mine named Charles, who is, by the way, in this call. Uh, we were working on some forward placement. And, um, and so that takes me to the next step. Like, is H a stopping factor? Like age is not a condition, right? You know that age is not a condition of your life, is a decision. So age is only a decision and this force is available to anyone and everyone who wants to try to do this, right? And I just want Charles to, um, Charles, if you're there, I just want you to um, pop in and just tell them why you started singing, Charles. Um, he is so good at singing. He's doing some great open mics. He even has a band that he performs with. So um, Charles, take it away. So my name is, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, my name is Charles Giles and I'm from Columbia, Maryland. And, uh, uh, and I'm older, like I'm 72 years old and uh, uh, I've always had this guitar, right? I've had this guitar my whole life and I'm from like the 60s. So I grew up a high point in American music, uh, the 30s, 60s and stuff. So uh, I've always had this guitar and my wife bought me a guitar, another guitar and an amp like five years ago. But it was under the condition I had to take guitar lessons. So I said, okay, whatever. So I took guitar lessons and then the pandemic hit. So uh, I'm, I'm on Facebook and I, uh, I answered this advertisement for Soundcheck Rock Academy, which was, is a music school in Columbia that, that teaches uh, kids. And they're saying they can uh, give me uh, music lessons, guitar lessons, and put me in a band. I'm there. Well, I'm like a certain age. I'm like 70 years old. I'm not going to be in any band. They, the guy goes, yes, you are, whatever you got. It. So I signed up for it. So I get over there and they have adult bands. <clears throat> and the adult bands are made up of the parents of the children that are taking the lessons because they have to wait for the kids to take the lessons in the cars. So some of these parents are like, whatever, I, I, I ain't getting a band. So they have adult bands. So I got in one of these adult bands. And I'm, you know, I'm trying to play the guitar and the uh, singer quit. So I'm there. Well, I can sing until we find uh, a singer. I said, okay, I'll sing because I've you know, sung whatever. I, so I started singing and then I saw Melly on Facebook and I, uh, and you know, I want to be the best I can be. You know, I don't want to be a fool. I don't want to make a fool of myself because we do have live, sh you know, we do give concerts every, 
every quarter you have to give a, sh you know, there's a live show and you have to participate. So I uh, took an audition with, or I did the free lesson with Melly and I signed up with her and uh, I've been there like a year and a half. And uh, all of a sudden I'm learning all this stuff about singing that I never knew before. Like, you know, there's three, you know, you have a head voice, a chest voice, a, a you know, you know, whatever. I'm learning all this stuff that I never. So it's really been uh, good for me because you know, I'm not dead yet. So you know, I still I can still play golf. I can still sing. I can still play guitar. Just because I'm older, there's no reason to give up living. So that's why I'm here. That's all I gotta say on this. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> that's so great. I love that, and I feel like that's exactly what i mean you know like you make the decision i mean charles is here telling the story right so why wouldn't you i feel like it's never too late to actually like commit you know if you commit today that you want to do this then you can do it and i'm gonna close that with saying thank you charles uh the opposite of depression is purpose that's something i i heard from a friend uh called kathy heller it's more like a mentor <laughs> Uh, so basically, we are meant to thrive, right? Um, we are meant to thrive. If it's like releasing your own music, if it's writing songs for like film and TV, that's called sync. Um, if, you know, it could be a songwriter, you could be a, a teacher helping others, uh, healing purposes, mind health. Um, maybe it could only be a hobby that you enjoy um maybe you could be like a like a best-selling artist in arenas or like an indie artist and in, in coffee shops um have cover bands and get paid to play at, at restaurants bars casinos uh, you know um do online concerts be a youtuber do youtube covers um you know i feel like all that you will you will overcome the struggle one step after the other you know journeys go high and go low and some of them have like a bridge so every single one of us has a skill to share a song to share a melody um i want to i want you to type i know there's a couple of questions and i'm i'm gonna try to get to them as much as i can but i want to make sure that i communicate this with you guys and i want you to write in the chat um like what is your biggest struggle in singing what's that can you write that for me um what's your biggest struggle in singing what is your biggest i know i i heard some like breathing stage fright harmony high notes and breathing uh-huh keep in coming keep in coming low notes okay uh-huh engaging from my diaphragm mm-hmm ornaments uh-huh yeah, ornaments is a big one. Definitely one of the last ones you learn. So that means you've probably been singing for a while and it's pretty great. Um, another big one for me is sight reading. So I don't have to memorize the song. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely a big one. Yep, high notes and riffs, singing in my range. Oh, well, that's a good one, Charles. Yes, I agree. Singing in your range. I feel like we all want to sing like Adele or we all want to sing like Mick Jagger or, you know, and at the end, um, you have to be familiar with what's your voice range in order for you to select the best songs that work for you. I'm not saying you cannot sing Adele. I'm saying if you want to sing Adele and if you want to like repeat it many times and learn from Adele, that's great. But at the end, um, we have to know what's our voice range and where do we sound like really good? you know, really good, like money notes. <laughs> um, Janet says either straining or flipping at my break area. That's a big one as well. Yes. Slim says um, rekeying from for my range. Yes, I agree. So all this stuff, it could be the high notes, it could be the low notes, you know, the tension. It's always there sometimes when you're like a little bit um, uh, tense uh well tension tense <laughs> passage the break the the mixed voice cracks um uh, the lack of confidence it just shows uh when you're singing all this you start to not believe in yourself you start comparing yourself to others um uh, uh 
maybe your parents don't believe in you and they're like don't waste your time don't sing and so that hurts right because they are like your biggest supporters at least my parents um where every time you try you get made fun of um you've been singing for a year or so but you still don't like your voice still you know still not unique you know uh uh clearing your voice um i don't know about you but getting over a fear feels like the you're hearing the greatest song on earth, right? <laughs> it's like, it's so nice because the first time is extremely scary. The first time that you are in that uh, audition and that stage in that place, you know, it just feels really scary, but uh, it feels like the world's gonna end, honestly. The second time it gets a little easier, still uneasy, but way more confident than the first one. Um, but that feeling of like, finally letting go, finally arriving, finally saying, oh my God, I'm in the zone. I'm, I'm in heaven. I can, I can do this. I remember the first time I felt that basically I didn't worry about the high notes. I didn't worry about the breathing. I didn't worry about the, the, the many years of training that I've been having. I didn't worry about anything except being present with the song and with my audience and singing from my heart and it was the most amazing feeling in the world and i feel that's why i still do this i, I feel that's why i still sing and i still teach and i it's just so amazing that feeling so what if i tell you there's like a shortcut to actually strengthen all of your vocal techniques uh you know that charles has gone through that um many people um shelly has gone through she's been amazing like shelly started um uh, very scared i remember of of warming up very scared of low notes very scared of high notes um and then she just showed up for an open mic and she killed it it was great it was great and and it was terrifying um the first open mic I remember, right? <laughs> yeah, she says, Michelle, that's Shelly. Thank you, Melly, you're amazing. But you're amazing because you showed up, you know? So what if, what if I tell you, just like her, there's a, a, a vocal technique that you can do in only three simple steps. So I'm gonna tell you, this is called singing in three simple steps. I know this is not for everybody. Some people prefer to basically just um, train with our world-class vocal coaches, which are there to help you. You can schedule a free trial lesson with them. Uh, Kristen and Juliana are there to help you. You met them in this call. But basically, everything that I've learned in my whole career, I am condens condensing this in three simple steps that I'm gonna give you. So this has taken me from like a beginner to the owner of my own music academy from like rehearsing songs in my room to like being booked in casinos and being paid $700 a night, you know, from being extremely insecure to performing in front of friends, family, larger audiences, um, you know, to get sponsorship with Converse. All those 10 plus years of trial and error is what I get to teach you here, uh, saving you lots of time, which I know it's very important. Like if you're one of those people who are like, I want to get into this singing skill thing, but I feel like it's a little late for me, right? If you're one of those, uh, or like maybe you're just starting your career and you're like, how can I shortcut all those 10 plus years that Melly has navigated into this, right? So there's a, a solution to unlock your voice, you know, full potential. And if you want to, if you want to go from like this insecure singer to this confident singer, uh, whether you want to be famous, you want to sing for friends, uh, find your voice, find your voice range, may, very important. Uh, be better at singing, um, you know, be able to control your, your chest, your mix, your head voice, be able to sing any, any song you want. Really, really great. Really, really amazing. Know how to sing those songs, know where to breathe, know how much to breathe, know what type of breathing exercises. All this stuff is things that I do every single day in my life. And most importantly, what health routines to follow for your voice uh, when you're off stage. Like, for example, do you guys have a humidifier? You know, um, that's very important, right? 
very important. Um, so most importantly, uh, you know, I learned how to be like a great performer and sing freely. Um, and uh, now many of you says, oh, but I mean, you, you have formal training and I cannot do that, you know. Uh, but if you if you like this free webinar, which I, I hope you did, uh, when you spend the next days with us, you're going to be like really on fire. So I'm going to I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about very quick over here. And if it's for you, then it's great. We welcome you with open arms. And if it's not, you know that Kristen and Juliana are there to help you each one of us individually. So Millie I'm a, vo I'm a vocal teacher myself, and I, like, want to help my students, but sometimes Perfect. they help me, and, like, they're struggling with the Kelly Clarkson, I know, it, or they're, like... Yes, yeah, totally. Ask asking um, me... So, how let me it. let me just finish over here, and I will I will help you in anything you, you want on the chat, okay? Uh, one second. Okay, thank you, Peach. Um, okay, so here we have something called singing in three simple steps. So this is a quick path to unlock your voice's full potential. Uh, this has seven amazing vocal exercises, 16 voice lessons, 20 singers tips, monthly Q&As, live stream. So that means you're going to be with me for three months and you're going to ask me all the questions that you want, everything everything, everything, complete instrumental tracks for you to practice access to our monthly open mic, which is going to restart in September, um, Facebook singing community group, uh, vocal exercises, downloadable vocal guide sheets, you know, all this is for you. If, um, you know, there's also two bonus videos, it's called uninterrupted vocal warmups, never seen on YouTube. Uh, and also healthy habits for vocal for golden vocals. So what do I do when when we're off stage? Um, you know, and by the way, I know that uh, I promise you some some extra bonus. I promise you a gift and I'm going to give that gift to you guys, which are my top five um, routines that I do before going on stage. You will have those in your email if you register for this webinar. Um, so what is this who is this course for this is an online course and this is the course for my online singers who um basically for my singers out there who might not have like a lot of formal training but would love to use this skill and um, you're feeling like we said before you're a little bit far behind but it's never too late like charles said right it was such an amazing story. So I've spent a lot, a lot of money on pro training, but you know, in this course, I would show you everything that I've learned. And the best part is that you can just take it one step at a time, right? If you don't have, you know, commitment time to do everything like today, uh, then you can just take it one step at a time and it will be for you. Now, what do you get from this? Um, at the end of this course, you're going to be able to hit high and low notes, performance tips to build confidence, sing or sing and find your vocal range. Very important. I show you how to find your vocal range. Really easy, really very well explained because my way of explaining is just step by step, as everybody knows. Um, sing without that uncomfortable throat tension, healthy habits for golden vocals, Roadmap to singing anything in no time, vocal exercises to develop your singer strength in the vocal cords, identify the tension points while singing and release them forever, the correct singing posture that will make your voice shine, right? So right now, some of you uh, might say, okay, uh, well, it was 297, that's the original, price for the course but now because you're in this webinar i'm leaving it for 97 dollars only again i'm gonna tell you these are 10 plus years of my experience all condensed here for you and so i feel like really paying 100 bucks or less it's really nothing compared to all the things that i've lived and gone through throughout my you know teaching years singing years training years uh you also get like three weeks of Q and A's with me, that's over like $210 or more. Um, this course is for you forever. Like you buy it one time and you can just use it forever. 
Uh, it doesn't expire. Melly Music Lessons private community. You basically get to be part of our private community, right? Um, and uh, same warm up Melly uses. Um, basically, uh, you're going to get the same warm ups I use every day. I put them here, by the way. I use uh, the chest, the mix, and the head voice exercises, the breathing exercises, um, the how to find a range, how to actually, how do I go through every single one of my songs and I analyze it and I train for it so I can learn it in probably three takes. Um, bonuses, I already told you there's some good, nice bonuses. They're called uninterrupted warm up exercises and golden vocal habits. So all that because you're here webinar price of $97. Now, if you're interested in doing that, um, I will welcome you to, you know, this one, which is uh, singing in three simple steps. Again, um, take three minutes and where do you see yourself, you know? Um, I feel like, where do you want to go and why? How? I feel like how are you going to get there is from somebody who already did that right? So somebody who already went through all those ups and downs, and that is going to actually help you and make your life much easier, right? So yeah, just take a minute and, and see for yourself, like, where, where do you want to be? Right? Where do you want to be? Um, so again, I'm going to leave this up here, uh, singing in three simple steps. It's super, super amazing. I'm going to um, just put the link over here on the chat on both chats i know there's some people that are on um on youtube as well and here you can sign up and it's you get a free sneak peek of the first part and it's just like super super great um okay and thank you all all the people here on youtube here is here um i see Kanak. i see Gail, I see, I see Nelson, um, a lot of you guys are over here. So thank you for being here. Um, great. And, you know, for the last questions that you guys have, you are always welcome to email me at mellymusiclessons at gmail.com. If you have questions about this specific um, course, if it's for me, uh, it's for, you know, everybody from beginners to advanced people, if you just want to um, learn a little bit more, then this is for you. If you want to, again, be able, here are the things that be able to sing high, low notes, you know, have confidence, your range, uh, the throat without tension. I know there's a few people there who, who basically said, um, hey, I have a, a really raspy voice. I have a really uh, bre breathy voice. Um, how do I hit those those high notes without having that? The answer to that is basically you you are using too much air for your vocal cords to close on that specific high note. So you have to understand that the vocal cords look like this basically, right? The the low notes are the part where they vibrate the most. So there's more space to vibrate. It's easier to hit. Um, you know, the notes that are in your chest voice. And then as you go higher in your range, uh, you start getting thinner. The vocal cords start getting thinner and thinner. And, you know, and you start um, having to be a little bit more assertive. You have to be, you have to learn how to control your voice really, really well. So you can hit that high note without straining and without, um, you know, having that tension. Another trick that I want to share with you just because you're in the webinar, why not, uh, is that when I am preparing for a high note or a low note, they're both attacked the same way, believe it or not. And if you, you know, buy the course, you know what I mean. Um, basically, I am very aware of something called like the, um, you know, the technique where I am yawning. So if I'm about to hit a high note or a low note, I'm going to kind of like yawn and I'm going to prepare myself to create more space in the back of the throat, things like that. Um, Jeanette says, your story is inspiring, Charles. 
Um, are you online somewhere? Charles, you can put, if you are online, if your music is online or whatever, you can put it in the chat so people can follow you. Um, and Kristen said, um, if anyone wants to follow her on Instagram, you can go there. Um, yeah, so there it is. Uh, a sneak peek of singing in three simple steps is everything I know condensed into this beautiful online course. Um, it has over, you know, seven amazing vocal exercises, 16 lessons, um, 20 singers tips. We're going to meet for three months every month to see how you're doing. Uh, you have the instrument tracks too, so you can practice your vocal warmups. And all this stuff, I don't put any of this stuff on YouTube because this is really like everything I've learned in one course. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope that you are, you know, ready to commit because if you're ready to commit, we're ready to commit. If you need, apart from this course, if you need some training from our world-class coaches, they're there to help you make sure that you book a free trial lesson at um, MelliMusicLessons.com MelliMusicLessons.com um, And this one uh, You can find that in MelliMusicLessons.com as well Singing in three simple steps You're going to find that as well I will be emailing you if you sign up for the webinar Just more information about this In case you want to do that In case you think that's for you uh, I would love to see you there and I would love to connect with you and answer all of your questions because I know we had limited time. I actually went over a little bit, but it was just worth it. And it was just so nice to connect with all of you guys. Um, I really appreciate everybody being on this call. Uh, I know you could have been somewhere else, but I hope that I was able to help you in somewhere or another. And if you need further help um, and if you need help prepare, preparing for things, or if you have questions about your students' speech uh, later on, I'm, I'll be able to help you inside the course as well. You know, anything you need, I'm sure that we can work it out. All right, have a great day. Um, let's see how we can buy that deal. The deal is already applied there. If you go over there um, and you press on there on Melly Music Lessons that think fic dot com then you will be able to apply um that deal that deal is going to be uh good until probably next week after that is going to go up um and then um let's see um uh, yeah yeah charles and i have worked together and charles this is this abby abby ha abby is another one of my students in this course and she's amazing. She's about to audition for America's Got Talent. Do you guys know that? And she's only 10. She's great. So um, it's amazing. And I just want to make sure that everybody gets that link. Um, I will be sending you, again, if you sign up RSVP for this webinar, I will be sending you more information. Um, I have quick time here. I'm going to just leave this up here for now. Uh, but I want to make sure that everybody sees it and, and, you know, and knows it and, you know, singing in three simple steps. It's super, super great. Okay. Awesome guys. Thank you again for being here. And, um, I want to thank all the new faces and all of the returning faces, Steve, Esha, Jeanette, um, uh, thank you, Juliana for being here. I know Kristen had to go. Thank you, Abby. Thank you, um, Fritz, uh, Fritz now. I, I hope I said it right. Fritz now. Um, thank you, um, uh, to Yasmin. Thank you to Khadija. Uh, thank you, Marie. Thank you, Michelle, uh, Nekla. Thank you, Orosa 966. Thank you, Slim. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Sweta. Thank you, William. Thank you so much for being here. And, um, I hope to see you soon. And I hope that we can be part, that you can be part of this amazing, great community and, you know, just all get involved and, and support each other in singing, which is the most important thing of all, you know, I feel like whatever your goal is, the, you can achieve anything, really anything that you want, if your vocals are strong, if your vocals and if your technique is there. And I feel like that's what I offer here. Um, thank you so much. I hope you have a great rest of your Sunday and um, 
make sure that uh, you see, you saw this here. Um, Yasmin, please uh, email me because I, I wasn't able to see what you were referring. Um, okay. Thank you again and hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. Enjoy. Enjoy your day. Bye-bye.